Yes. Thanks. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we have David, who's a software developer, and Nalia, a UX designer. Um, and we're going to be interviewing them. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's get into this. So first of all, could you both explain your job role? Would you like to start, Nelia? Okay, I can start. Um, so I'm a UX designer, which means that I um, design user experiences. So how uh, it is to use um, apps or websites or games, how, how, it, um, how it is experienced. Um, so yeah, how it looks and feels. Uh, yeah, and I am a software developer, uh, primarily focused on applications, uh, mobile apps, uh, iOS and uh, Android. So I develop it, I uh, write the code uh, that uh, Nelia decides to, the features she decides to be done, and also uh, some uh, game development. Yes? What? is the hardest project you guys have ever worked on? Mm. You can go first, David. I need to think about this. Um, uh -uh. So one project I was working on, uh, I can't talk about too much details, but it was a quite big company and uh, I just took over for another person that just left and I had nothing to go on and there was no, no comments in the code and then there were no documentation at all. And uh, it was just a single person who had developed everything and it just got dumped in my knee and I had to figure out everything by myself and it, nothing made sense at all. And it was just uh, all, this was just spaghetti code all, everywhere uh, and uh, tangled up completely uh, but in the end I managed to uh, um, crack most of the code and uh, rewrite it to make more a lot of more sense and uh, yeah that was quite a difficult project uh, when there's no uh, comments or, or uh, things to go on when you're starting nice I think the most difficult thing I've ever worked on, or project I've ever worked on, was when I was working with uh, SAS before uh, at our previous company. Um, and there was just so much things to think about, and it was so complicated, and it was like a real challenge to, to understand, like, what, what is the user supposed to be experiencing? How can we help them? How can we make the best uh, for all the people? And everyone is so different. And because it was an app for people with diabetes, we realized like that means so everyone have their own like life and do their <laughs> own things. And it's hard to make something that fits for everyone. So that was, uh, that was really, really challenging, but also very rewarding and very much fun. Um, have you guys worked on any Steam games that are public right now? And if yes, did um, Steam removing Steam Greenlight make it harder for you for others to see your games? Uh, no, uh, at least I have not published any games to Steam. Um, I have published to uh, Apple. Uh, to App Store, and uh, they have been quite uh, cumbersome. They can be quite cumbersome to work with also uh, with some uh, guidelines, and they're quite harsh uh, for the sake of quality, of course, but uh, it can be uh, much to think about, and uh, Steam is, could, is kind of the same in that manner. Yeah, no, this is the first game I'm, I'm working on as well with the with it, David, so we're doing this. And are we gonna have it on Steam, David? Uh, of course. Uh, since that is the biggest platform out there. Maybe we can answer the question when we have <laughs> launched the game next year. <laughs> <laughs> 
before I ask my question, I just wanted to follow up. So you said you post games on iOS system. So like what are the guidelines exactly? So how strict are they? Because like games like Fortnite have been banned off for uh, boycotting their prices and everything like that. So yeah. Uh so yeah, um my issues were not at all like the Fortnite issue. Uh I had they were more like uh very specific about how the screenshots are taken and naming the app and writing description and also details in the quality and, and uh, making sure that everything is just right. Um, the issue on Fortnite is quite a big and almost political issue where uh, it every payment has to go through Apple uh, to ensure that uh, it's a fair and square system and you're not getting scammed. Um, but uh, they also take a cut of that amount the company receives, which Epic Games, Epic Games, which uh, do uh, create Fortnite, doesn't like and wants to do by themselves. Also, for example, Spotify has this problem and they want to handle the payment by themselves. Uh, but if you open the gates for the big companies, they also have to open the gates for smaller companies, which would, uh, uh, invite some of the more sketchy uh, services to be able to uh, handle payment by themselves. Yeah, and I think Apple takes um, 30% cut. I think yeah. it's pretty large. <laughs> um, another follow-up question from someone that is in like the developing side, would you say Apple is in fault? Like with the guideline and like the strictness? Uh, take the take it one more time. The question. Vicky, do you want to repeat the question? Um. So, for someone who's in the developing side of things, and you publish on iOS, would you say Apple's mainly at fault, like with the guidelines and how strict they are? Um. As everything in the world is not just a uh, wrong or false it's always a gray scale and uh, i think what they're doing is for it's all, all, all of course there is some uh, profit and uh, they want it to make profit but i think they make it for the good and uh, um they do it for the quality if you go on the play store they have a way broader um catalog but they are they are quite a more a lot of apps that don't really hold the standards that app uh, apple apps do so it can be quite uh, cumbersome to work with but in the end i think it's pretty good nelia do you want to talk from maybe a design perspective as well because obviously like apple's guidelines affect you quite a lot yeah sure yeah so um, Apple has a lot of um, guidelines, they call them the human interface guidelines, um, that can help you a lot to, to sort of like uh, show you how to design the best type of navigation with the, the bar at the bottom and how, um, how to like best practices on, on how to design experiences in apps and in games. And uh, by following these, you could save yourself a lot of time and uh, it's a great resource. Um, on the other side, if you wanna do something special, it might be a bit different and it might be harder to innovate on design and, and experience design, but um, like David says, it's, for, um, it's to ensure that everyone has the same, like good quality and it's easy to use. So. I, I agree with David that it's for a good reason. Okay, so now on to my question. If you could change anything, your job for anything else in the world, what would it be? Hmm. Um, uh, I actually like my job really, really much. So if I could choose, I wouldn't, uh, even if I had all the money in the world, I would not stop uh, developing. 
uh, I would still develop. Um, but if I could uh, change something in my work, I would um, be more involved in the product development, uh, where you decide, uh, kind of where Nelia is, uh, where you decide what to be developed and not just developing that uh, stuff that's decided. And I think if I want to change something about my job, um, right now I am a UX designer um, designing websites for uh, clinicians or for doctors um, as my main job. And then I do games as a hobby. And I would love to do games as my main job and make lots of games uh, all the time. If you could change anything about your career journey, what would it be? Hmm. Would you like to go first, this one, Ilya? Okay. <laughs> change anything on my career journey. Well, I would like to um, pick up SAS and carry her everywhere into every new job I ever have. and always work with her no, she's amazing um and make more i wish I, I made a game earlier i love making games and it's so much fun um and it's something that you can do as a hobby as well like next to your job so it's something i wish i just started doing before uh well yeah uh, i would Kind of the same as Nelia. Uh, I have done small games before and I have also started quite a lot of projects. Uh, but they are, some of them have failed, just ran in, the, uh, just uh, uh, timed out. And uh, if I could chase anything, change everything, I would have completed more and started less. Um, what type of uh, programming language do you use and uh, how long did it take to learn it? Uh, so, uh, as, uh, just as Nelia, I uh, uh, developed games on the side of my main job. Uh, and in the main job, I use uh, Swift and Kotlin for apps. But in the game, this, uh, the game side, I use C Sharp, uh, which is uh, used in Unity. We're using Unity as a game engine, uh, which holds physics and sound engine and uh, graphics engine and everything in just one package. And uh, the scripting language used there is uh, C Sharp. And I would say C Sharp is kind of a easy to learn uh, language. It's quite similar to Java, if uh, you know these languages. Uh, but the most important thing I think is that if you know the basics of programming and developing, any language is learnable. It's just about learning um, the mindset. And then it's just not a syntax. You can, you can learn that, you can Google that, you can read. Um, the most important thing is to get into the mindset. Um, I don't know where I've heard this, but didn't like uh, Unity stop like, um, I don't know the word, didn't stop support or something like a few years ago, or I'm just hallucinating, I don't know. Uh, stop support for, uh, for what exactly? <laughs> I don't know, I heard this like a year or two years ago, I kind of can't remember, but Something to do with Unity and support. I don't remember. Uh, um, don't really know exactly. Um, we are used to, we are using the latest version, but it uh, could be something like uh, they are dropping support for older hardware or older versions of uh, software and stuff, um, which is always happening continuously. Yeah. Uh, but uh, some some uh, 
one really big game that has been developed by Unity is for, uh, in, the, in Unity is, for example, Hollow Knight, which is quite a big game uh, and is developed completely in Unity. Um, so a follow-up question from earlier. When you were talking about your career journey, David, you said something about failing some of your games, I believe, or fa some failed projects. Could you like expand on that? Uh, on earlier projects. Um, so yeah, so, you, said, so um, you failed some of the failed ones. Yeah, uh, I fa uh, um, I don't know the English term. Uh, stuff just uh, you, you don't do it. It's just um, running out in the sand. Can you say that in English? Uh, and um, it could be that some, it it's, takes quite a lot of uh, people to make a game. You need a lot of competences. You need a, a scripting knowledge and uh, developing, and you need a game development level design, uh, graphics, uh, UX, sound, um, music, and there's quite a lot of quite a lot of stuff. And uh, where I failed could be we are missing one competence. And instead of searching for that competence and reaching out for people, maybe people we don't even know, uh, to get the complete package, we just lay down and, and give up, uh, even though we could have put in quite a lot of time in something. Could I ask a follow up actually? So for this game, what like what kind of was the difference? Like why did you choose to you know find Nelia, find other people to help you out with this game? Uh, so yeah, I, I just get really really bored of. Uh, giving up so i just figured um i want to just uh, spec out uh, listed all the competences that we needed and just made sure that we had everything covered and, and uh, design is continuously not something i don't have covered uh, and uh, me and elia work in the same uh, daytime job and uh, i have uh, She's doing a great job there, so I thought that she would be a good match and asked her if she was interested, and uh, she was, so here we are with that. Uh, and uh, the other competences, I, uh, for, for example, music and sound, uh, I know people, because I, I come from a music background, um, so I know people that are really good at that. Um, and some other, dis like game design, which uh, uh, elements should we have in the game and what kind of level and, and uh, stuff like that. Uh, we agreed upon that, that we should uh, uh, do together. Um, so I wanted to ask both of you this. So are there any like designs or um, apps well known? that you guys have invented all the time? Sorry, could you repeat that again? Okay, so I wanted to ask you both this. So are there any designs or softwares that you have worked on that are well known? That are, sorry, the last three, I'm, so, I'm horrible, sorry. I think he said that are well known. Or maybe you can talk about like past projects that you worked on. Right. Sorry. Um, have you, David, worked on anything well known? I'm thinking. Um, not in the games, no. Uh, so, uh, as Nila said, this is our the first uh, real game, uh, big game that we are doing, and. Uh, this is going to be quite huge. So uh, <laughs> in one and a half year, we will say definitely yes to this. Um, but if you're, we're thinking other projects, I at least have been working with uh, Volvo and uh, healthcare in Sweden. 
yeah and i've been working like healthcare mainly <laughs> in sweden and in, in england and nothing that is very famous <laughs> Another uh, follow-up question, um, David, is that little nightmares in the background? I was just wondering. Uh, in the background, it's actually uh, Nelia who has drawn this. And uh, these are uh, early stages uh, character ideas for our game. Uh, we are experimenting with so it's actually Nelia who has drawn both my background and uh, her background. Who's asking the next question? Blago. Blag. Okay, I'll ask for him. What qualifications do you guys need for your job? Um, um, so, software development is quite a unique uh, profession. It can be completely self-taught and learned and just, as long as you can prove what you know and uh, what you can do. You can you can get a land a good, pretty good job as a software developer, um, but uh, for the most the, the standard thing to study is a, a bachelor degree in uh, computer science. Um, and for design, I think there are a lot of ways into. Um, user experience designs you can also you can study user experience design or you can um, just start working a lot of um, designers just start in photoshop and have fun and or, or they, they draw or um, they just learn some tools um, and uh, yeah it start maybe with personal projects that you that you just uh, uh, experiment with and, uh, and then I think it's when you go into use your experience as a field and not just like design and artwork, where it's more like um, art and design and art can be more like draw, more drawing and illustration, but that use your experience design, it, it can be important to have empathy. So to, to be able to think like if somebody comes here, um, maybe or if if something like happens if i lose internet connection like oh that's annoying like what should happen and does, does the do they feel like really annoyed and what is the easiest way to solve this and make it a smooth experience what what can we do to to just make it uh, like nice um so to be able to have empathy with people i think it's um important yeah maybe i should just clarify that uh like Nelia said, the mindset and stuff. Um, in developing, it, it's uh, you could just start with your own project. It could be creating a do-it-yourself uh, smart home system with a lamp and a button, just some few lines of code and uh, interesting uh, interest of tech and uh, yeah. a problem-solving mindset. Could you have to get you going and, and uh, learning quite a lot. Uh, do you have any good strategies of attracting more people to like your products or what you're making, like making them want to download your app? Um, so the, this is quite a bit in the future, but we have think a bit of, on, on it and it has very much to do on uh, with the online presence. Uh, if you're not on the internet, you don't exist. Uh, it, it's it's quite a, that simple. Uh, nobody gonna go on Steam and search for your game explicitly. You has you had have to reach out to the people that are going to play your game. Uh, so we have to create some kind of uh, 
blog or YouTube channel or Instagram account and market yourself all the time. Just get, get your stuff out there. Um, it, it's quite a harsh market. Uh, it's uh, there's re many really good games out there, and uh, so you just you just have to get to it and um, get heard, be loud. Would you like to add something, Nile? No, that was good. <laughs> um, can you guys um, tell us more about your game? So, like, what type of theme you're going for, and like, yeah, the storyline. Yeah, um, I think you should do this, uh, David. Yeah. <laughs> really um, so uh, it's uh, basically a Metroidvania. Um, if you are not, uh, if you don't know any games like Metroidvania, it's, you could think of Super Metroid, uh, basically all the Metro games, uh, Guacamelee, Hollow Knight. Um, but if you would describe the genre, it's uh, a 2D platformer with an interconnected world, not, not uh, singular levels, or uh, like Celeste or Mario. Uh, it's more like an open world in 2D where uh, parts of the map are locked behind different features. It could be you need to get double jump to, to get to a new place uh, or a, a dash in the air or something. Uh, and it's quite a dark theme. Uh, I don't want to spoil everything, but, but uh, it's, uh, it's about the afterlife, uh, what's, what could be coming. Um, and the end is quite dark. Uh, we, work, we are working quite a lot uh, on the tone and theme of the game. Um, Nearly have done a huge job there with uh, her UX mindset to what would a person feel and, and they think. She had uh, done some really good workshops there uh, with uh, mapping out the feeling we want to achieve with the game. So yeah, uh, uh, quite the goal is a quite hard a 2D Metroidvania game uh, with a dark theme about the afterlife. Um, okay, so what I can tell from what you said, so you're still in the early stages, right? Take that again. Um, so you're still in the early stages of the game. Uh, yes, it's uh, we are in the early stages uh, developing. And the type of vibes I was getting from your game is like Hello Neighbor, little, um, Nightmares. So are you guys going for that type of theme? <laughs> so sorry, could you repeat the question? So. Um, basically, from what you guys told us, I'm kind of getting like a vibe of Hello Neighbor, like Bendy, these type of games. Is this the type of game you're going for? Uh, I have actually not heard about Hello Neighbor uh, game. Um, a big, uh, huge inspiration for, for our game uh, is Hollow Knight uh, and the Super Metroid. Uh, Hollow Knight is quite a new 2017, if I recall, and Super Metroid is quite old, it's for the Super Nintendo. Uh, um, and also, one inspiration for me is also Celeste. Uh, Do you think you could both talk to us a little bit about maybe like the good things about making a game, but also the challenges? Would you like to start, Nelia? Yeah. <laughs> I, think <so. laughs> um, I think the good thing is um, that you get to 
or at least the way we work with this game is that we get to um, to learn a lot. Like I like I, I don't normally work so close to music, but now we listen to a lot of music to find the right mood to find and learn so much about the development process. Like how is it working with upgrades like David is working on right now? How what's going to happen and how should there be like collectibles in the game? Like should you collect stuff? And um, all of this is very um, interesting to learn about. So I think that's um, that's the good thing. and. A challenge uh, for sure is to also think about all these things and having them come together and make them feel have a, have the same feeling like they like they all need to sort of like get tangled together in a nice way and work and um, it's boring to play a game where you um, where it's too easy and it, also a game that is too hard and um, so we need to find the right balance and that's Challenging very much fun. Okay. Yeah, uh, I would agree. It's it's really fun also to get out of your comfort zone a bit, uh, trying new things and learning new stuff. And um, also, since we we are not really Blizzard, we are we are four people doing, so we're doing quite a lot together, and it's really fun to just sit and brainstorm and develop on each other's ideas and uh, just moving forward forward and seeing something develop and coming to life um, and some something that's really hard for me it's uh, it's some it's a uh, you touched on it nearly it's uh, getting everything to be make sense in the world since we are creating a completely new world everything has to make sense like for example say that yeah we're going to have a temple here uh, why is there a temple here who built the temple why is there a, why isn't there any other buildings here um and every world has economy even if it's sticks and rocks um what kind of economy how does it work everything it's such a depth in everything to make a world become living and feel alive that you don't really feel about when you play a game. But when you think about it, it's what makes a good or a bad world. It's the depth of it. How much thought behind it. Yeah, and I think to add on what you just said, David, it's you don't think about it if it's a good game. But if it's a bad game, you tend to think about like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's annoying. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, what is this? <laughs> yeah. So I know that we only have you for 30 minutes and we kind of run over. Um, sorry. So I don't know if the young people, the interviewers, if you have any final questions. Yeah. So One. Oh. Black, you go first. Okay. Um, what audience is the game based on? Um. We're thinking kind of the um, uh, older teen or lower uh, younger adult, quite um, gamery audience, not the casual uh, one game a year uh, type of gamer, not the playing on the subway to work. It, it's you're supposed to be comfortable with gaming uh, since it's supposed to be quite a hard game uh, with complex upgrade systems and uh, progression. Um, so I have three more questions. Actually two more. So Sorry, when one, are one you guys- One second, Mika. David and Elia, do you have time or do you need to go? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shoot. All right, perfect. Sorry, Vicky, continue. Um, so when are you guys planning to release this? And um, when it's released, can we be the first people to try your game? So we are, uh, this is, uh, we don't have a, a really firm release date. We are, uh, having our eyes on Q3, 
Q4, uh, the third or fourth quarter next year. It depends on how um, close we are to the finish. And uh, also, we have to consider other games dropping in that time frame. Say that a really big uh, game and franchise of the same genre, uh, genre are dropping two weeks earlier we are not going to make any sales because people will be uh, busy with that game. So we have to uh, be kind of flexible with the time frame to to find a slot where we as indie developers can uh, fit the market. Uh, and uh, without uh, discussing this with the other, I would say that we we will have some kind of beta testing we we need to have that uh, and i would guess that will be relevant for summer next year yeah we would love to have you test it that would be would be great are there any other questions I mean, really okay. So final, final 10 seconds for questions. Okay, we're good. Thank you so much, David and Ilya. Like this has been super informative and I know that we kept you for like longer than we said we would. Um, but I think maybe it's like a final sort of um, round off. Maybe both of you could speak some sort of like inspirational words for the young people. So um, they're at the age where they're just doing, they're gonna be doing exams, which will sort of define what they do for the rest of their career. So maybe give them some like inspirational words about like when you were 14 years old and then how you viewed life and the rest of your career. Um. First of all, uh, thank you for having us. Uh, it was really fun uh, to answer questions and speak about the game uh, and our career. Uh, and I would just like to say, um, I know it can be boring and tough, but uh, better times will come. And ju just don't think about doing something, J just do it. Uh, it's everything takes way much less uh, way less time if you just do it from the beginning not thinking about do it doing it and uh, worrying about it not being done and uh, so just do it and uh, so you can enjoy your free time uh, free time after yeah thank you for having us uh, and yeah i i, I agree with with, uh, with David said that um, it's um, it's always um, it's always like you start to think about what you want to do when you grow up and you try to plan it in and la la la, but it never turns out that like that anyway. From my experience, it's always as long as you know what you like and you, you have an open mind to try new things and you, you're always willing to learn about them. Like we, we love making games, but we can't work making games because we have other jobs, but we do it on our, our spare time anyway. So it's like, as, as long as you want something and want to try it and um, you don't need to, to go there straight away, you could try a lot of different things and, and sort of like see where you end up and go with the flow. Life doesn't have to be like a, like a planned schedule that you follow. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> and also, um, when you're parking when you're parking a car, if you're looking at the cars on the side, you're going to crash. You need to stay focused on where you want to go, and on the empty spot. And it's exactly the same in life. Don't focus on uh, what happened if I fail or uh, that could go wrong and this could go wrong. Focus on the goal and just do it. 
All right, brilliant. I love that. Like, find what you love, focus on it, and just do it. Go with the flow. <laughs> this is all great advice. I wish someone had given me this advice when I was a teenager. <laughs> Um, but yes, yeah, so if there's no more questions, I think everyone would just like to say like thank you. Again. I have one. I have one more question. Oh, one more question. Okay. Um, it's more of a favor. Could you guys um, like we need to make a trailer before we upload the video. So basically, could you guys like say a few short sentences like summarizing? So like, are you guys interested in like your so you, your job? If that makes sense. Bikke, can you explain that again? So what maybe say what you want them to say? Um, I'm not hundred percent sure what they I feel like they should say what they think happened today, like what they said personally about their jobs and like if so are you interested like becoming a you um designer or so and then explain your job. Okay, as in like, are you interested in being a UX designer? If so, watch this video. Hey, that. Yeah. <laughs> but like, not not as cheesy as I just did. <laughs> well, that wasn't cheesy at all. Oh, I can go first. <laughs> are you interested in UX and games? Watch this video. Nice. Uh, are you interested in developing games on your free time and uh, starting your development career? You should really look into this video. Wow, brilliant, both of you. Thank you. Uh, YouTube. <laughs> you want to see that was really good. Um, any more questions from anyone? I think that's it. That's it. That's the end of the uh, show. Social media, just. If you want to like have it in the description. Oh yeah, so maybe we'll get like your Twitter or whatever. I'll like message you, and then they can like tag you in the videos and stuff like that. All right, awesome. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thanks. Bye. Okay. All right. Uh, bye bye. Yeah. Good luck with the game. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Good luck with the test. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.